Hello friends. Once again, I present to you an intelligent gadget from the key of developer My Smart Home, which is interesting and multifunctional, with no factory analogs currently existing. The device is a Zigbee relay with four independent control channels and dry contacts, meaning they are not powered by the relay itself. Additionally, it has a number of external wired interfaces that can be used to connect various sensors and buttons. Essentially, it is a constructor that can be flexibly configured depending on your requirements. Moreover, if necessary, the configuration can be changed at any time, allowing you to obtain completely different functionality from the same device. More details will follow in my review, but for now, as usual, I ask you to like this video so that more people interested in smart home topics can find it and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. At first glance, the hero of the review resembles a relay from the ModCam project, which has a similar design and four separate control channels. I reviewed it several years ago, and for those interested, I'll leave the link in the description. There is also something from the factory version ZG-003RF, the link will also be in the description. However, this solution, due to the possibility of installing external sensors, is much more versatile and can solve a wide range of different tasks. Like the mentioned relay from ModCam, this version is designed for use in a standard plastic case in which it is supplied. The contact terminal outputs are made with this in mind, so there is no need to remove the cover to access them. In addition to relay outputs, there are a number of connectors that can be used to connect various peripherals, and I will talk about some of them in this video. The front cover, by the way, has a width of 95mm and is transparent which is convenient as it allows you to visually determine the state of each relay by the corresponding LED indicator. The backside has a mount for a standard DIN rail for installation in an electrical panel. There are also mounts for screws, for example, for wall installation. It's time to proceed with a detailed inspection of the device and study all its capabilities, for which I will temporarily remove it from the case. The device can be conditionally divided into two parts. The power section is represented by four relays at the bottom and the logic section, which we will now examine in detail at the top. Here, powerful relays designed for a current of up to 16 amperes and a voltage of up to 250 volts are installed. They are not connected to each other or to the power supply of the device itself, so they can work with different electrical circuits and voltages. The version of the device that I received is designed to work from the electrical network, with an appropriate power supply installed but it can also be ordered with DC power from 5 to 40 volts. The Zigbee module used here is the RF Star CC2652P, the same one used in many Zigbee coordinators. Now let's deal with the top part. First, from left to right, there is the power connector. In this case, it is 220 volts. Next is an 8-pin terminal block for wire connections. Depending on the firmware and the jumpers installed next to it, it can be used to connect mechanical buttons or return switches or DS18B20 type temperature sensors in any configuration. The ground contact is highlighted in black. In my case, the firmware provides three pairs of dry contacts for connecting buttons or switches and one remote temperature sensor, which also needs power. This power is taken from the next pair of contacts. It's simply a 3.3 volt power supply, particularly for the mentioned temperature sensors. The remaining two 4-pin connectors are I2C and UART. They can be used to connect various sensors, and the UART can also be used for firmware updates. This is what the device looks like from the back. The assembly is very neat and of high quality. From my experience, there are no problems with the devices from this manufacturer. Not only do I review them, but I also use some myself. The relay power contacts are designed for a current of up to 16 amperes, so the conductive tracks are made accordingly. This is what my test stand looked like during testing. It is not just a relay, but a multifunctional device that can perform a variety of tasks. The first three pairs of contacts on the terminal block, in this version of the firmware, are intended for connecting doorbell buttons. Pressing one of these buttons switches the corresponding relay. Instead of the fourth button, you can connect a standard DS18B20 temperature sensor. The yellow wire is for data and the black wire for ground. These are connected to the terminal block, while the red wire for power is connected to the adjacent connector. The firmware can be configured differently.
four buttons, or two buttons and one sensor, or four sensors, whatever you prefer. This is what the sensor looks like. It is easy to find on AliExpress. Its usage spectrum is very broad. It is often embedded somewhere, for example, in underfloor heating, a boiler, or even in an aquarium. The remaining two connectors are self-contained with their own power, I2C on the left and UART on the right. Various sensors of this standard can be connected to them, and the UART can also be used for firmware updates. In my firmware version, I2C is intended for installing a combined temperature humidity sensor, for which a Stevenson screen was made using a 3D printer for outdoor use. It can also be, for example, a BH1750 light sensor. As for the UART, it is configured to work with a PZM energy meter. I received the version with a 100 ampere current transformer. Alternatively, a US100 rangefinder can be used. To measure voltage, it needs to be connected to the line. For this, two of the four contacts of its terminal block are used, phase, and neutral. The second pair of contacts go to the current transformer, which looks like a ring. To measure current, the phase needs to be passed through it to the load. Measurement is performed without contact, so large currents, up to 100 amperes, can pass through it. As a load, I am using an incandescent light bulb. It is connected directly to the neutral line, while the phase goes through the first relay. The current transformer is also installed on this line, meaning there is energy monitoring on the first line. I also installed a mechanical switch on this line. It is a regular switch, not a doorbell type, so to switch the relay, I need to turn it on and off. By the way, a rigid binding of the button to the relay is not mandatory. You can get firmware where each button is unbound from the relay and operates in multi-click mode for automations. Now it's time to connect the device to the management system, in this case, Home Assistant. It does not work directly with devices and uses additional integrations and add-ons. The device in this review works with Zigbee 2 MQTT. Since there is no official support and likely won't be, because this is a customizable device and the objects change depending on the firmware, you need to install an external converter provided by the manufacturer. This is a text file that needs to be created in the add-on folder. Next, in the Zigbee 2 MQTT web interface, go to Settings, the External Converters menu, add a new line, enter the converter file name in it, save the changes, and restart the add-on. By default, the device is already in pairing mode after the first power-up, or you can press the reset button on the board four times. The converter is installed, so the connection proceeds smoothly. Since the device is designed to connect to stationary power, it has router firmware that allows it to transmit data from other nodes in the Zigbee network, thereby expanding its capacity and coverage. Here's the list of objects. In any firmware version, there will be control for four relays. This is the basic functionality. Then there is data from the energy monitor, current, voltage, consumed energy, power, network frequency and power factor, then temperature and humidity from the combined I2C sensor, and then temperature from the DS18B20. The set of objects may vary depending on the installed firmware and the devices used, and accordingly, there will be a different converter for each variant. All this is transmitted to Home Assistant via the Mosquito Broker and MQTT integration and can be used in automations. In the control section, there are relay channels. In the sensors section, there are energy, frequency, and temperature and humidity data from the sensors. In the diagnostics section, only power is displayed. Some data is hidden by default, which is a common situation with energy monitors in Zigbee 2 MQTT. To view them, you need to click on the line that shows hidden items. Here, the missing objects were found, current, voltage, and power factor. They are deactivated, and to use them, you need to click on the selected parameter. Then, on its tab, go to settings by clicking on the gear icon in the top right corner. Here, enable the activity switch and update the object. Repeat this for all necessary items, and if something is not needed, you can hide it in the same way. After a while, all activated objects will update and start showing data. As I mentioned earlier, each relay has an activity LED above it. It will light up when the relay is closed. In this case, the first and third channels are on. Thanks to the transparent cover of the case, the status of all channels can be understood by the state of the LEDs. The relays are quite quiet.
Real-time energy monitoring speed. The load is on the first channel. I have shown only one firmware option, but there are many more, and the device can be adapted for specific tasks. It can be a multi-zone thermostat, taking into account data from an outdoor sensor, or a multi-channel relay with energy monitoring, though only for one channel or for the main input with physical buttons for manual channel control or for generating logical events. In some cases, one such relay can solve all automation tasks for a separate room. That's all. I hope this video was useful and interesting for you. I would appreciate your likes. They help promote it on YouTube. If you don't want to miss new reviews and tutorials, subscribe to my channel. In the description below the video, you will find a link to the relay and the manufacturer's contact, other reviews of devices from my smart home, as well as my Telegram channel, Facebook page, and a group for smart home discussions. Join us, it will be interesting. Thank you for your attention. See you soon. Peace to all.